four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Danger Zone. I'm sitting down with Ralphie Steins. Did I say that right? That's correct. Okay. And we're just going to talk a little bit about um, his background, his history in sailing, and his passion for that and whatever else we get into. So Sounds good. I'll set this up and say that we met during a warrior sailing uh, program event. And uh, back when I was down here in Florida for this SOCOM um, adaptive sports camp, and I can't, they opened it up for one day to go sailing. I was like, this is perfect opportunity to uh, find my way into sailing. And so I signed up for it and I came and I was on the boat with you all day. And it was awesome. Great instruction. And I really enjoyed my time with you. And you seemed like a really interesting guy with a long history of sailing. So I wanted to sit down and talk with you. So, Well, it's um, anything that gives you something, it's nice to give back. And bottom line is I had an awesome, I'm having an awesome life. And um, a lot of it had to do with the people I met through sailing. And, uh, you know, there's something that I want other people to enjoy. When you're on a boat, you don't think about all the crap that's going on in life and uh, you don't think about, oh, what's the next Facebook page? What's the next greed thing that happened? So there you're dealing with the elements, having a good time. You're with your friends and that's the way life should really be. So Yeah, just uh, kind of unplugging for a bit and enjoying life out in nature you're out on the water you know you might not be surrounded by trees or whatever but you have wind and all these natural things happening around you um how long have you been in sailing well i was lucky i grew up on an island in the north sea called helgeland oh, wow. and uh, it's only one square mile so if you wanted to really play you had to adapt and get out on the water yeah. and it didn't matter if you were went swimming if you went fishing if you the problem with the swimming aspect is it's in northern Germany, so your season is pretty short. And one of the reasons I left Germany is, one, people didn't smile enough <laughs> and didn't have enough of a good time unless they were buzzed yeah. or it was too cold. So Florida kind of is paradise for me at this point, even if there are enough whacked out people around <laughs> but that's everywhere basically so yeah that's very true i mean you're gonna find bad people <laughs> wherever you go but it's not even that yeah. they're bad it's yeah. just that they are they must come from a different planet <laughs> that's 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 a very good distinction there i mean it's not you know some people are just dealt different hands in life and find themselves in different places exactly but we had mentioned right before we start talking about this is um something that is sort of a mantra of mine is every man makes his own way in this life. And it's sort of about taking self uh, ownership of your life and not letting other people dictate kind of what you do and, you know, how you should, how you should be living in a certain, you know, yeah, well, with, with certain conditions or this or that. As you said, it's also what hands you are dealt. If you are being brainwashed from an early life, early age on, it's very hard to step out of it. What is reality? I grew up in a, in a family that had restaurants, and so you started working very uh, early on. Uh, there, was, there was plenty of BS going on, but it always had to do with work, drinking, and uh, going crazy, basically. But it's, uh, what I learned is you had to work to get something done. If you wanted to have money, you needed to work. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go somewhere, you had to make up your mind and figure out a way to do it. And if that mean, means you have to ask other people for favors, I was never afraid of doing that. So to get out of Germany, first I ended up on a lot of sailboats. The better I got on sailboats, the easier it would be to get a ride to get away. <laughs> And the same way when you arrive somewhere, if you work hard, you normally always 
people will accept you a lot easier than when you're a slacker. So it's an interesting thing. And that drives other things again. You know, anytime you have a vision and you want to do something, there's nobody that can help you with that. One thing I learned very early on, praying is for the weak. There's nothing gained of doing it. To me, it's a waste of time yeah. where you can actually accomplish something. Yeah. But if it's important to other people, the wonderful thing about this country, or at least that's how it's supposed to be, if there's separation of church and state, uh, everything should be very good. The moment you intermingle all those things, people get really upset. And uh, I just saw the Book of Mormons and it just cracked me up to see the play and how brainwashed people get by religion. And it doesn't matter what it is, yeah. uh, just in general. It's just sad to see that they don't see the belief in science is not there. <laughs> and I just, I have a hard time with that. And yeah. So, and if you hear people that are very well educated, that they still have these freaky beliefs, uh, it just, I, I can't identify with it. And it's, yeah. uh, I, if I would see what I actually think, I think your audience wouldn't be very happy with me. Oh, you, you can say whatever you want. Uh, what I was going to say is the, I think there's a, a line, every, every, everything is sort of can be in balance. You can have things in balance. You can experience religion, you know, or your tr specific tradition or whatever. And with balance, but as soon as you start pushing that on to other people's lives or, you know, letting it become destructive within your own life or letting somebody control you, that's where it gets a little scary for me. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I tend to just do, do my own thing yes. and try not to harm other people in the process, right? Just Correct. be a good human, nice human. And that's a, it's the best rule in life. <laughs> Don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's just get along. And I think you, you know, some people are able to think a little bit past their, their brainwashing with religion, but unfortunately a lot can't. Yeah. And I see that it restricts their life a lot. They, I, they let it restrict what they do. They let it restrict their even physical travel, you know, getting out away from, um, getting away from their church and, and stuff like that. But, oh, absolutely. It's, uh, and if they're traveling, they're traveling to the people, to the places they're comfortable with. And, you know, uh, I understand that I'm most comfortable on the ocean. So it <laughs> doesn't mean I want to be on a cruise ship, but I want to be on the ocean. So, yeah. Um, but the cultures that are out there, there's so many cultures that, you know, they're more developed than we are sometimes in the United States. I think in the U.S., everybody is so U.S. centric and in the rest of the world, uh, they have a lot going on for them as well. And yeah. if you don't travel, you don't experience that and sailing help me to travel the world. So I've been on every continent and uh, except for Antarctica, but uh, it's been pretty interesting and eye-opening for me. And if I can tell one thing or say one thing that people should do, it is travel and restricting travel and making it harder and trying to build walls. There's nothing accomplished. Only bad things can come from that. Hmm. It's uh, uh, in Germany. They had a wall <laughs> going through Berlin, and uh, well, everybody was really happy when that came down. And now people talking of building walls. I believe in borders. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I don't believe in walls. That's just the wrong, wrong way of going forward. Yeah, I would. I would say. I can see where they're trying to deal with the after effects of a problem that unfortunately they created. <laughs> Correct. It's, so I would take it a step further back. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the physical wall um, because people are going to get around it anyways, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, but uh, that's a waste of time, money and energy. Yeah, I, I could see that. 
but the the thing that I would like to see changed is us stopping going around and destabilizing countries and causing the refugee crises. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Leave them alone. You yeah. know, there's no need for us to be involved in starting wars all over the world. Like, let's <laughs> let's reduce it down to the people that you know directly attack us. Yes. Or you know, no, um, I, I'm uh, growing up after the Second World War in Germany. It's uh, definitely. Um, I'm feeling that we were taught history and uh, history always repeats itself. And right now it's uh, like a scary time to some degree and it really doesn't have to be. And I agree 100%. Let's just be nicer to each other. Let the countries do their policy, policies in their countries and take care of your own shit in your country. And yeah. um, right now it's, you know, it's sad to see what is going on a little bit. Yeah. Like we could be fully involved in North Korea here any day now. Like it's <laughs> most likely shit. going to happen. What yeah. a shit show that yeah. is. And for what? Just because they're having a pissing contest going on between rocket man and the trump meister it's yeah. just so stupid yeah and they seem hell-bent on firing a missile like it's what is wrong with you like it's the end of your people you know it's a well it's not just yeah. it's the end of could be the end of all mankind because how who knows how the chinese react yeah and and, um, and the russians and yeah. the russians yeah. and the Indians and the Pakistanis and uh, everybody that has a stupid nuclear yeah. bombs. It's just... Uh, so if people are listening to this, it's not... It, it can't be, you know, you can't let news like this get you down too much. No, absolutely if you start, not. <laughs> if you start feeling your blood pressure go up a little bit listening to this, no. just get out yeah, on the water. Go well, sailing. That's That's what the great thing is about that. Dan is absolutely right. And look, we are so fortunate to this point. And again, it's uh, nothing is new. It's just everything goes through cycles. And uh, I'm still want to make sure that I'm teaching more people how to sail, to enjoy and get away from a lot of the, the crap. There's so many things. I think there's diving is swimming sports basically get off the couch to do your own thing whatever it is that's good for you if you want to climb a mountain climb a mountain but don't talk about it do it yeah how many and how many races have you done thousands <laughs> <laughs> i wow. started sailing in 19 19- 68 and so i've been basically been doing it all my life wow. and so there's a lot of races then there are a lot of paddleboard races uh canoe races uh running races bike races uh obviously after i had two hip replacements there are no more running races in my future yeah. uh, i was my cannonball shape was never done for speed on the <laughs> racetrack so but uh, on a sailboat i could always hold my own and again being one with nature is just so freaking awesome and somebody said to me two days ago we had a big storm and we went out in our outrigger canoes and we looked at the oceans and the waves are six feet high. And I know that's not really high, but in a little canoe, it's really high. And um, he goes, that's how I feel on the inside a lot. So when I'm on the ocean, I feel I'm one with the ocean. And that's how I feel a lot of the time. I think it's always safer than being on 95 or 75 on a in a car on the ocean there's yes the element is there but if you prep yourself correctly if you know your equipment if you have taken all the safety measures it is really pretty safe yeah yes you hear about freak waves but not very often and there's a reason for that so i noticed that in a lot of the kind of more extreme things i did in the military like free falling from a you know plane where you're skydiving and all that stuff like the parachute work if you 
you know, you're, you're folding your own chute. If you do it right and you do all the steps like you're supposed to, it opens. Exactly. Every time. Yeah. Like, you know, in rare <laughs> cases, like it doesn't. You know what I mean? But if you take care of your equipment, if you do the cr proper, you know, prior checklist, you know, after checklist, take care of your stuff. A lot of these things that are viewed as like dangerous activities are really not that dangerous. They're fun. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to worry as much when, when you know you've done the right steps to basically put in the work, like you said, put it's, in the hard work and you reap the benefit of the good time. Correct. And without the surprises. <laughs> well, one of the big surprises to people that all of a, all of a sudden decide to go cruising or they basically haven't done their research. If you're living on a boat, that thing is a floating apartment that can sink underneath you. <laughs> Sure, in a house you can have floodings, um, but the consequences of sinking are normally a lot more severe. So if you don't know how to take care of all the fittings of all the, the plumbing on the boat, the engines, you're all of a sudden, you're asking for trouble. And so it takes effort. And the moment you're on a boat and you would live on the boat, people work constantly on little issues. And that gets old after a while, where you can't call a plumber <laughs> when, you're, when your toilet is stuffed up on a boat and you're in the middle <laughs> of the ocean. Yeah. So who is going to do it? You have to do it. Yeah. So you just, as if you're doing stuff like this, you just got to know what your abilities are and what you can deal with. And it becomes pretty... Frust it can become very frustrating very quickly. Or you have the right attitude and you smile and you go, okay, another <laughs> adventure begins and yeah. you have a lot more time, fun. And if you can then, if you come back to shore and you have the same approach to most problems, mm -hmm. it's just another adventure. Just, so, uh, we call it em embracing the suck. Yeah. <laughs> or love the one you're with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so you're involved in some uh, sailing programs. I know you're highly uh, involved in the sail what, Sailing Foundation. You're the president? Yes. Um, well, the Sailing Foundation is a place where people can donate their boats. Our charitable purpose is maritime education. And what we do is we use the vessels that are donated to us for programs like the Warrior Sailing Program. And uh, we're using it for other groups as well, like the New York City Harbor School. There's an organization that we're trying to help. They're dealing with foster children to learn on sailboats where it's basically a floating classroom. Uh, we're dealing with a group that um, takes disabled veterans and their families out sailing. So the boat's getting used and our biggest client is the United States Merchant Marine Academy where they, the midshipmen at the academies use the vessel as training vessels because you look pretty stupid when the first boat you're driving is a thousand foot tanker. So you start small and you go up in size, but the principles the, don't really change how you dock. Uh, yes, there's more horsepower. Or yes, you need a tugboat. But the reality is it's about planning, having a fallback plan, and executing those plans uh, when you have any situation arising that are not, you know, of the ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> and that sailing is always, you got to always have a backup plan and figure out what to do. But you should think about it before you're actually getting to that position. So in your head, okay, we're going to dock a certain way and it, it doesn't go so well. So let's make another loop and try again and to have a different plan. Yeah. And you just embrace it and get it done. That's something that I love about sailing is the sort of strategy to it where you're not just dealing with what you have. You're, you're thinking that next, next step or two ahead, or, you know, like you said, talking about a plan and, 
um, it's it's I grew up playing strategy games, okay, like uh, Risk and Stratego and yep. all these other things, and I love strategy, and so, and I like that you know extra level of thinking. It's almost like a chess game where you're like you know move move this little rope you know this line here here and there and change change your trim on your sails. It's like it's making these little changes that are having a big outcome on on how how your course is you know how how fast you're going and all that. Oh, and, and if you there's the racing aspect or the cruising aspect, you have other players on your field, other sailboats, you can't always predict what they do. Mm -hmm. What they say is there's a book. You have to understand what's written in the book. If you execute everything in the book, you're going to be pretty good. But to beat the other people that read the same book as you, you got to beat the book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's, and that's up to you how, how much you concentrate, how well you can read certain things. There's so many signs on the water, like telltales. What, which way is the water flowing? What is the wind doing next? Uh, uh, but not in a, in a micro system, just what's right there around you. Is there a little puff coming? How can I connect one puff to the next puff to the next puff to go faster? And you have to pay attention. And if you just want to go cruising and you sit and you drink your beer, it's a wonderful thing as well. Yeah. If you like to drink a lot of beer or if you just want to be out there and enjoy nature. Yeah. I like the racing aspect because um, it's it's more thrilling to me. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you're really competitive from a young age. Uh, as well. Yes. Yeah. I would say I'm competitive. Where did, where did you think you got that from? <sighs> I have no idea. My old man was a drunk. Mm -hmm. And so my mom wasn't really competitive. I have no idea. It was just, just inside It's you, yeah. just happened. So yeah. I like to, you know, <laughs> The, the victor gets the spoiled side. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, it I, makes me happy uh, to do well, and it, you know that doesn't necessarily mean winning, but I want to make sure that I know I gave my best, and I I like the people around me to give their best, and then it, the result really doesn't matter. It's just hey, we've done really well. We worked as a unit well together. Because there's a lot of luck involved. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot, a lot can uh, change on you out there without. Yeah. You know, without like, it being in your hands. Absolutely. But I found that with uh, dealing with concussions and brain injury, that it's really hard for me to concentrate and have attention when it comes to something like reading on a computer screen or this or that. Like, it's it's almost like the lines start running together and. The cool thing about sailing or just things that something I've noticed in my healing process is just working with my hands, so, something about that input and output. And, uh, I'm actually able to kind of focus on that because I'm, you know, thinking about my arm moving here and there instead of just like trying to, trying to read or like listen or take any in stuff. It's very, uh, tactile, I guess. And yep. it's, it's, um, I'm able to have a level of concentration it's almost like a brain exercise for me. It's 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 almost healing in a sense that I'm I'm sitting here having to concentrate and make all these corrections and I'm able to do that because it's physical. Well, motion yeah. motion is stimulating. I think if you're doing stuff like that yeah. and there's a stimulation to it. If you ever balance like an indoor board or something and you have a hard time balancing if somebody now throws a ball at you all of a sudden you think about the ball and your body takes over and you're going to do, you know, the balancing comes on its own, at least for me. And yeah. so it's quite interesting. Now you add two balls or three balls that getting thrown at you and you have to throw them back. It's a great way of tricking your body. <laughs> and so the balance all of a sudden happens and now you're just, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Yeah. 
obviously you got to stay in shape to some degree if you let your body go and you become a slave of your body yeah. that's a bad thing so the couch is not your friend that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> the couch hamburgers but i love those hamburgers yeah i almost feel like we should deal away with couches just have like <laughs> Just get rid of them, have just empty space. Like you, you don't need a spot. <laughs> if you want to sit down and sit on the floor. Well, or maybe <laughs> just like they have those balls in yoga places. Yeah. But I, you know, it's, there's so many things you can do that are good for you. But some of them, I just fight it because <laughs> I want to still have some bad habits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, the older you get... Uh, you let go of some of them. <laughs> so I I definitely like to drink a lot. These days I don't drink at all anymore. I yeah. never smoked, so I was lucky with that. But uh, what bad habits can you still have when you get older? So for me, it has become my midlife crisis is definitely exercising these days. Yeah, yeah. Even if I don't look it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's interesting as humans, we're just in, addictive in nature. So I, what I've seen is you can either find yourself addicted to something uh, healthy or unhealthy. That's kind of what it what it comes down to. Unfortunately, a lot of people find themselves addicted to several of the unhealthy things, and then you have <laughs> compounding unhealthy effects. Yeah. You know. But I see a lot of people, um, you know, when they're thinking about. I, I met a girl who's trying to quit smoking, and it's uh, she. She's so focused on the fact that you quit that. It's like, well, how about just finding something else to do instead yeah. of the smoking? Like, just replace it with a healthy, uh, a healthy habit. Basically, just yeah. get get addicted to something else. Yeah, you know yeah. that's healthy for you. Well, but, again, a lot of people, it takes effort, yeah. and uh, it's just not easy. <laughs> yeah. It's just like. It's really, really hard to fight addictions, and um, I, I get it. Yeah. But, you know, the one thing is being out in nature is better than sitting on the couch and uh, eating Percocets, and we know that for a fact. Yeah. And so, but what do we do for pain? And I think you is the right thing to smoke weed or is it uh, what's the healthier of the unhealthy things to do yeah and uh, well motion a body in motion stays in motion so sitting around you're gonna get uh, diseases from sitting around if you're moving too much you get injuries from moving too much so what is the best balance for you and yeah. i'm definitely feeling i don't want to be a slave to my body uh, after two hip replacements and elbow stuff i know i want to keep moving because i like to do what i want to do and if that's sailing or paddling or uh, foiling or whatever it might be you got to kind of be in shape to do those things. Yeah. And uh, that's what I want to do. So that's what I have to do. So, Can you describe the foiling? Uh, I probably would have to show, <laughs> show the foils. But basically, there's foiling. What I mean by foiling this, you can have it on sailboats. And if you watch the last America's Cup, oh, the right, best yeah. thing probably to say is watch some of the last America's Cup stuff and you see catamarans foiling. That has translated into other boats. There's a boat called the, Wa the Moth, and uh, it's a small one-person sailboat. And it has a wing underneath the water, like an airplane wing. And it lifts the whole boat plus the person out of the water and you have less wetted surface area, less drag. Less drag means faster speeds. Most people enjoy speed. Yep. And um, so, but it takes a lot of balance. And they did the same foils that are used for sailboats for surfboards. And so now you can surf 
the waves, but you're getting lifted out of the water and you actually, it's eerie how quiet it is when you all of a sudden don't have the drag of the water. Yeah, and on the it's, surfboard, it's just on the, on the small pieces of the... Of the, the wings yeah. and of the foils. And it's absolutely spectacular. So I I recommend for people to look at it because it's... I'm 55, I will be 55 in a month. And for me to do this stuff is so cool. I just love that there's new challenges to be had to get good at something else yeah. on the water so and do those do those have any sort of like forward travel to them like you can almost go in flat water and just like if you had a speedboat kind of get you up to speed can you travel a little bit yes you can what we, it's called pumping and you're moving your body up and down and using the a little bit like a bongo stick uh like one of those bouncy sticks that were around yeah. you're doing that just with the water and the way the shape of the foils is it will give you a forward motion so oh wow yeah it's pretty you know talking about it it's hard without having the visual effects to yeah it. yeah yeah so but if anybody looks up sub foiling um surfing uh surf foiling it's just spectacular yeah the cool thing so i'm really interested in doing more sailing like yeah. I, I i want i i host a podcast i like to travel i like to get out here you know i, I don't just want to do them in my studio and have people come to me i want to go to the people much like we're doing right yeah. now you know and had i not come to the sailing camp I, w I wouldn't have you know met you or had the time to do something like this and so even in the basic course of sailing, I've already achieved the goal of, you know, meeting interesting people and traveling, you know what I mean? Oh. So it's something that I'm looking forward to doing much more of. Well, the, the sport of sailing, there's so many disciplines to it as well. Mm -hmm. And like the sailing I like more these days is where you're crossing oceans or you're going from one place to the other so you meet different cultures you meet different people in those places and there is different disciplines so if you're sailing the ocean a lot and you're going to different places the round the world race is going on right now and so the, it's the volvo ocean race and you see these boats that are they just left South Africa yesterday to sail sail to Melbourne, Australia. Oh, wow. And I'm going to Australia next, well, this month on the 20th to take part in the Sydney to Hobart race. So after the Sydney to Hobart race, I could go to Melbourne and see my friends that did doing the round the world race right now. So it's uh, there's a, a lot to be done like anything like in the military to get good at something you train for it you got to do that if you want to sail on bigger boats the principles stay the same the loads change but the principles are always the same mm -hmm. i recommend to start on small boats go bigger and um, basically find what you like and with the warrior sailing program we want to take more warriors out but one is you can't take everybody because we just don't have the funds and the resources yeah. for it. So we are doing the advanced camps to get people opportunities to do deliveries. Uh, we had a guy by the name of Josh, who is another vet that had some injuries. He has sailed from Bermuda to the United States, from the States to Bermuda, he sailed to the Bahamas, and there are a bunch of guys that have been doing it. And we are trying to get more of the vets to do those things. And you just got to put your time in. As I said, I've been doing it for 50 years. And uh, so guys, they feel comfortable taking me along. So the more training you have and the more events you have done or the more deliveries you've done, the easier it will become 
to get on a boat. Right, and right. And yeah. so if you have put your time in, then you will be on boats. You will meet more people. You go to cooler places further away. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it uh, it really hasn't changed how it all works. Yeah. The the things that are kind of odd me, you, you mentioned you, you, you like the crossing the ocean uh, races and stuff like yeah. that. Um, something that fascinated me was just recently they did a, a Viking ship that sailed from yep. like Norway over to New York City. Yep. And I thought that was really cool. They built it with like the old tools and everything that they would have had back then. And uh, to me, that is one of the coolest things as well, because again, it's like what has history taught us. If you want to explore, you need ships. Mm -hmm. And okay, now you can say airplanes or whatever else, horses, and but you need a vehicle. And if you want to cross an ocean, uh, you can row. But sailing is a lot easier than rowing. And so the Vikings had very efficient ships built. And um, what is really cool is if anybody wants to see that ship, go to the Mystic Seaport Museum. And it's actually right there in Mystic, Connecticut. And you actually can see it right now. And uh, the museum is just a great place of seeing whaling ships and just the history of what happened in this country and they're lucky enough to have the Viking ship right there right now. Oh, awesome. The ukulele, uh, Hokulela, it's a boat that just sailed from Hawaii all the way to New York and is back in Hawaii at this point. But uh, it's just amazing how the different cultures built different boats that worked for their climates and for their sea, but that didn't hold them back to go further. Yeah, like, and like the Contiki, the, the, the raft. Con the Contiki was a raft they built, uh, Toa Heyerdahl. He was Norwegian, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Like, uh, my father read that to me as a, as a kid, the oh, Contiki book. Yeah. And it was just... I, I always thought that was such a, a, a great inspirational story of, of, of scientific experiment, right? Because that's kind of like what led into it and just telling people like the sort of the naysayers like, ah, oh, whatever. No, we pretty much believe it's this way. Like, don't, don't bother, <laughs> don't bother challenging the status quo, you know, well, the, like you're crazy. And well, the, uh, the world is flat. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. world is not flat. <laughs> we figured that out. So exactly. <laughs> gravity is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, you, you're saying something about what's amazing is what was read to you is not being read to the kids today because it's not sexy enough a raft to sail across an ocean is fascinating to me it was fascinating yeah. to you but because when it when they filmed about that stuff or when they wrote about it it's old news and nobody really it should be mandatory reading like uh, yeah. there's a book that i always thought should be read in all the schools or given to every kid it's called cod and it's uh, basically about the overfishing or the plundering of the sea yeah and uh, those kind of books uh, if i had the money i would buy the books but and give them to the schools but you got to make the kids still read them yeah. so there should be mandatory reading stuff uh, so that these kids could see that the greed that drives us to plunder the planet is pretty bad and yeah. we got to take care of our natural resources and you know in sailing one of the things i went to hawaii last year on a on a race and seeing all the garbage that still oh, floats boy. around yeah. from the tsunami that hit japan and it's the same dirt is still out there and it won't go away unless we do something about it. And it's just sad to see again for me that the administration pulled out of the 
Paris Climate uh, Accord that people don't greed comes over stewardship and yeah. uh, we need the stewardship of of our planet to do something good for the next generations and how can we not do that i just it's again mind boggling to me to put people in position of power of agencies that are supposed to protect the planet uh but they are driven by the greed of the industries they worked for. Yeah. And it's just mind boggling to me. And to say, oh, if there are more jobs, everybody is more prosperous. It's all horseshit. It's really, it's, uh, we're going to win the Darwin Award by destroying our planet. And uh, <laughs> does it matter that you have any, that you have money, but the, the planet is dead. Yeah. So I think we as a civilization have to, to rethink the greed and uh, the, the way we live yeah. to some degree. I, I agree with you heavily on the ocean pollution thing. It's I watched the documentary on the plastic island yeah. that's out there. It's crazy. And I was just at the uh, – on the – east coast over here and i did some surfing we went out yeah awesome awesome time getting in the ocean yeah and we came into the beach and you just you look down at the seaweed and there's plastic everywhere. all all in it yeah it's just it's everywhere well and one small thing people can do uh, like again i i sail a lot i'm very lucky and um, when you sail up the east coast during the months of june and may you have all the graduations and everybody is so happy to have balloons and they're letting the balloons go. There is not a 15 minute period where you do not see balloons. And what do we think happens to these balloons in the ocean? Mm -hmm. The animals eat them, the plastic will be eaten and ultimately we eat it. Yeah. So like we are killing ourselves by being happy about releasing a freaking balloon. It's just absolutely insane. Yeah. So please don't release any more freaking balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it's, it is a huge education piece. Um, oh. And I would disagree from what I've read on the Paris uh, climate deal. It's sold as a climate management deal, but a lot of it turns into other, other programs. Of course, it's but, but like li every little bit helps. It's yeah. to me, Th it's it's yeah. it's a little bit of yes, it costs some money to do the right thing, and yes, there's always something that could be better. But to just put your head in the sand and say like, well, we are not going to be part of it anymore. We have a responsibility, like every other developing country, to try to help all these issues with garbage in the oceans, with CO2 emissions, uh, all those things. We have to be part of the solution. We cannot just say, oh, we are the United States, we don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's just not a way to go forward. Okay saying well we shouldn't have these programs within that thing or we don't support these things i can live with that mm -hmm. but again to just say no that and in these kind of parts and pulling out of stuff i just can't i think that's very it's weak that's really what it is mm -hmm. so if the whole accord is right there's probably plenty of bullshit like everything else, but yeah. let's just everybody, let's put it this way. Everybody do their little part. If you're a smoker, try to dispose your, your uh, butts and yeah. do a good, better job. If you need to drink single use bottles like we have there, yeah. try to reduce that part. Sometimes yeah. it's really hard. Like in Flint, Michigan, you shouldn't drink out of the tap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but let's 
everybody try a little bit to do a good job on taking care of our planet. I think you made a great point is uh, a lot of times we, we, yeah, we want these, these certain big entities to like take care, to, to take care of it all. But really what it's going to take is a lot of us deciding to do something about it. Correct. Like little, little steps turn into big, big effects. Right. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Like e each of us needs to do our part and, you know, take, take an interest in, in our, our well-being, humanity's well-being on this earth, you know, and, and every other living piece out yeah. there. I'm not against hunting. I'm not against, there's so many things. It's, it's just, let's be a little bit smarter, try to find a solution. Do we really at this point in life need to start hunting elephants and big game where they are endangered so nobody sees the stuff anymore? And then, of course, we're going to hear all this because, oh, the money that's being raised by big game hunters will save so many more animals. It's all bullshit as well. I'm sorry. It's like if you need to kill stuff and you don't eat it or you don't do anything for it, don't freaking do it. Yeah. And like if you want to hunt deer, there's plenty of deer around. It's perfectly fine. There's yeah. plenty of animals around. So again, try to do the right thing. And yeah. uh, obviously we, I will disagree with a lot of people what the right thing is, but yeah. it's okay to disagree as well. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just, my view is a certain way. Your view is, but let's have the conversation and maybe we can actually change it others mind to some degree yeah are there numbers that are acceptable and maybe they are maybe they're not yeah. and maybe we never find a solution but not talking is definitely the wrong way of uh dealing with problems yeah i i think on the big game deal is yes there may be money that's helping support them but I think I'm very purpose based. Like what, what purpose is this serving? Are you using every part of the animal? You know, are you, um, are you doing this responsibly? You know, um, just paying to do it. So you have a cool story to tell at a bar with your buddies is not, is not the right reason to be taking, you know, an animal's life. It's in, in my, my opinion, yeah. you know, somebody could try and convince me otherwise, but I don't feel the need to do that. Yeah. You know, I, I do hunt, yeah, but, but, absolutely. It's, but it's, it's, it's to have a better understanding of where, where my food comes from and to collect it myself. So, something about that is so much more natural. And yeah. in the state of, there's plenty of animals that uh, need to be hunted. Come mm -hmm. on. I, yeah. I'm not an idiot, yeah. but uh, you know, I, I, I'm just getting upset with the, Everything has to be painted with a big brush and we can go to gun control. We can go to all these things. Again, everybody has to be more responsible and trying to do a better job of it. Yeah. And, you know, is there room for the NIA? Absolutely. If they would do something more than just promoting to, if there's more than just promoting or we shouldn't have any laws uh, and it should be just up to the individuals. That's not a solution. And, <laughs> and now we got back to the beginning. My, one of my big problems is praying will not make a freaking difference for 500 people that just have gotten shot. Mm -hmm. And so again, I'm, I'm the Antichrist to some degree because I just don't believe in that horseshit. Yeah. I believe in action by yourself, for yourself. No, don't be an asshole and try to share your good fortune with other people and as well. And then we can talk about tax bills and stuff <laughs> like that. And you just go, fuck, it's just not right that the people that have a shitload of freaking money already, that they're not giving back to society. We all have a responsibility to society 
if we want to live in a civilized world, we have to pay taxes. Yeah. Okay, what the distribution is of those, you can always argue about that. But to just say, oh, they create jobs will be created because the 1% getting more of a break, to me, that is complete hogwash. And there is, again, to me, yeah. other people that are much smarter than me, who am I? I'm a freaking sailing dude. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I have a view of the world. Well, yeah. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has yeah. one. But um, and unfortunately, these, the way we pass laws in our country right now is very, it's a salesman. They have to like sell it. Yeah. So, so they're, they're putting it out there like, Hey, this is great for this group of people. Right. And there's each selling it to their own person. Yeah. So to the, you know, if you don't agree to the, with the people they're selling it to, it's going to look awful, you know? Yeah. And if you're the ones that they're selling to, you're like, yeah, this thing is great. Well, but and, there and, are but, facts but, and there is, there yeah. are groups. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, <laughs> we can't trust the press anymore because no. the president says so. Okay, well, but there are groups out there that are bipartisan that come up with what the view, what they think will this tax bill will actually do. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can, again, agree or not agree, but uh, the more you look at not what the Republicans say or the Democrats say, you look at some of the independent groups that are working on different stuff that come up with that are smarter than me and you yeah. and doing this for a living. You listen to them. I listen to scientists because that's what they do for a living. <laughs> and so, and I don't, I, when it comes to climate stuff, I rather listen to a scientist than the president, because I know he doesn't read anything that uh, that has to do with it, because yeah. he's too busy trying to enrich himself. So, <laughs> so it's an interesting thing when it comes to those things. And now to just to me, the countries that I've been to, where there has to be health care to some degree. And there are people, I believe, yes, you have to work for stuff, but everybody has dealt a se separate, different deal. So if you don't, in a civilized world, tribal communities take better care of their elderly yeah. than we do in a civilized world. How can that be? That's just a bad thing. And uh, Well, we've we've gotten really far away from the tribal community Correct. That, and I think any, anything we can do to get back towards that style of living, taking care of each other, you know, c coming together, supportive units where everybody's doing their part. Not everybody can be the warrior that goes out and, you know, fights for, you know, fights off a, an invading force or, you know, or collects the food, but each, each person has their place within that tribe, you know, the medicine man, this Absolutely. and that. And, um, I, I agree. Our, our healthcare right now is a huge clusterfuck. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's a mess. But again, and, there are other countries, yeah. it seems like this country always wants to invent something that's better and bigger. Yeah. But there are other countries that have systems that work better than what we have right now. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's perfect. Well, it's perfect doesn't exist. Yeah. So we have to live with compromises. And the problem is where the politics drives it in a funny way that we don't end up at compromises anymore. Yeah. We come, we have one shit show after the other and we don't it have just something. A shit show. Yeah. yeah, but it's just a different shit show instead of having these people work together. And that's really my biggest, one of my biggest issues that the parties don't work together 
to accomplish something for the American people. And, you know, like on a set board, if you operate that way, you will not get anywhere. Yeah. And it, it, like, it thing, doesn't yeah. matter if you are a Republican and I'm a Democrat on the board. If we want to get somewhere, we better work together to get there. It's very simple. Yeah. And we do that because we have a common goal, but I think mm -hmm. the common goals have been lost. Yeah. And somehow I always felt those politicians should work for the people, but it seems like they're working for the industry, whatever interest group, and it doesn't fucking matter if it's Republicans or Democrats, yeah. they've all become slimy, I don't even know how to describe them anymore yeah. because it's uh, so sad where it has landed at this point. Yeah. And there is no civility anymore to any of them. And and that's where and I have such a hard time with our president to just thinking that he is better than everybody else. He is just the same fucking idiot like yeah. me, myself. And, and yeah, he fell into shit as a young man to make some money, and he has been a spectacular salesperson. But is he a better person than me or you? I don't fucking think so. I think he is a pretty miserable prick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, w I wouldn't call him a miserable prick, but I agree with it. He's just another man. Yeah. A lot of people get caught up putting people on a pedestal. Yeah. And it is just politics has gotten so nasty yeah you, you said it it's just slime all all the uh the sexual harassment stuff coming out it's on both sides <laughs> it's, it's and it's all of them it's, because it's they're like all yeah. men and yeah. they all thought they're better than other people so it's really sad yeah and it's just like you know what we need to just clean slate like let's get let's clean house that would be nice but yeah. then it's it's e always easier said than done, yeah, and I think we both so. realize that that's not possible either. But yeah. you can't make the fox be in charge of the hen house, and that's what is happening in a lot of the places that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Constitution is an unbelievable piece of work where they try to do a lot of things very good. If you agree with all of them or not, but the separation of state and church, to me, the moment we are losing that, the idea of what the constitution stands for has lost and America has lost. Yeah. The moment we don't agree to abide by law the way you know, if we think individually if it's perfect or not, but we need some laws that we can follow and everybody should follow. And if they don't follow them, there's consequences for them. If that's lost and then America has lost, the constitutional idea is lost. Yeah. There's these separations that were put in place and have worked for 250 years. And right now, there's a breaking point to that, and that's sad. And I hope, I hope somehow it can get resolved. And maybe we have to put everybody on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think more and more people with access to information are realizing that they don't have to listen to the brainwashing anymore. And more and more people are figuring out, like, what I've been told is bullshit. And... I need to find a way to be okay in this life. And a Absolutely. lot of, I think we are in this time of sort of a big disruption in the way us humans live life. We are on the verge of that. I mean, if you look at the wars, if you look at technology advancement, ro robots taking over um, a lot of jobs and all this, it's look at the beauty of oh my God. an osprey yeah. right there. Yeah. And <laughs> isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and I think, with i think technology freeing us up to um do other things is great 
you know, and yes, it is taking people's job working in a factory or something, but, um, that you I, become a slave we're, of it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're coming to a point where, you know, what, what are people going to do? Is there going to be a job crisis where people won't have, you know, a paying job to work? Are we going to need to figure out some type of system to take care of everybody? You know, when, That's when f- robots are doing everything, but like, it, isn't it funny how some of the sci-fi thrillers out of the 80s yeah. and early 90s uh, becoming reality? Are we going to have the Hunger Games? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't know. It's yeah. sad. <laughs> but What's the best entertainment for us? And you just go, holy shit, this is this has become reality. Yeah. I better go back out on the ocean and just spend my time there. <laughs> Well, I, th- I think a lot of humans are kind of unplugging and starting to reconnect with each other. I think they're starting to, you know, a lot of people are plugged into their phones. But I'm, I'm, I'm noticing just in the people around me, a lot of people are starting to connect more with each other, starting to look back to, hey, you know what? Why am I listening to these people who are so far away from me? Like, let me figure out who my tribe is. Yeah. You know, like, let's, let's start working on that tribe-based community again and build that strong. I, th- I think people are starting to f- like go that way. They, they're looking for something real, something, you know, that they can, you know, feel and, and, and touch and have, have d- open discussion li- like this, yeah. you know? No, uh, I, but a skill is being lost, uh, because people don't talk to each other anymore mm-hmm. or not talk to each other in a respectful way. I think it's, I think it's perfectly fine to disagree on a lot of issues because that makes life interesting. Mm-hmm. But let's work on the solutions as well, not just say I am wrong, you are wrong. You know, certain things, we don't know what's right or wrong. We have to let it play out. And you can say right now, okay, why don't we play out the tax cut, let's say, and we can. The problem is there's certain historical events that has have happened in the past. And if you look back in history, history repeats itself. And so there has never been, or there is no proven Actually, I shouldn't say it this way. It's it, it might work out this way that more jobs get created by a tax cut. Mm-hmm. But most people that have studied it are very doubtful. And that makes me very doubtful. Yeah. And so that's, that's a very good really, way of putting that. That's, yeah. uh, so, you know, but so you can go back to communism. Well, it played its way out that it really doesn't quite work if the state is in charge of everything. Yeah. We know that. And it's awful. That's, yeah. It's awful. But where capitalism has gone at this point is sad as well, where the greed is just has taken over everything. And it would be nice, again, to have people get away from that greedy aspect of life and just be more giving, be more tolerant, and be more accepting of everything. And, you know, it's easy to say those things. Following up on them is a lot harder. I'm trying to do it every day, one little piece at a time. Mm-hmm. And that's all I can do and everybody else can do. But I, you, we got to make an effort to do that as well and not just hide behind new stations and all those things. And we got to keep on educating ourselves and read. And yeah, there are liberal papers and there are are very right-leaning papers, but read them anyway and just make up your own mind on stuff. And again, it's our actions that drive stuff. There's no God that will can... um, point us in the right direction that's all horseshit yeah there is no hell there is no afterlife 
in my belief. So just get on with life, get her done, be an, don't be an asshole and have a good time. Make the best of it. Exactly. Yeah. So. Well, I think we have probably beaten it. Yeah. Beaten the horse to <laughs> death by now. Yeah, but, we we can go ahead and uh, wrap up and right, uh, but thank you thank you for sitting down with me today yeah, and that's talking. Awesome. I just I enjoy so much uh sitting down and having these conversations, you know. Um and you know, we thought we were going to talk about sailings, but we ended up covering all, the things. All, all, all types of things we shouldn't you know? be talking yeah. about because it's <laughs> but I, like obviously we don't agree on it all but yeah. that doesn't matter yeah, at least we yeah. we you know i hope we're gonna go sailing again soon and yeah. uh, maybe go on and cross an ocean and have a good time doing that and yeah. don't have to talk about it hopefully the career will get sorted out there will be insurance for all Greed will go down, and uh, maybe I just should smoke a big doobie and just uh, keep <laughs> just on relaxing. dreaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I could do that with you, but um, <laughs> that would, uh, yeah. So, again, thanks for joining me, and it's it's awesome to sit down with somebody with so much uh, sailing experience and just. The, the cool thing about, I will say this at the end, the sailing, the warrior sailing program, it's, it's been great for me already. And I just, I've been, you know, to the one day and then the basic course and it's been amazing. And the thing I like about it is the networking piece where it's not just like some cool summer camp that you come to and okay, thank you for coming these couple of days. Okay, bye. Like, good good luck with your life, right? Yeah. There, there's an investment there. And wanting to see if it is, you know, some people may not be interested in after the first time. They're like, you know, this isn't for me. And, and that's, that's fine. Good. But the people that are interested in it, you, you all have set up a network where they can get plugged in anywhere. Yeah. You know, back in the Midwest somewhere, Iowa, who, who knows? Um, well, we wanted to make sure we teach a skill. Mm -hmm. And we we hope that then the participants take it on themselves yeah. to keep on doing the sport with a little bit of help and some of the networking that we've set up. And I promise we don't talk talk politics while we're out on the boats. <laughs> That's not what we do. We're going to have a really good time and get away from all that stuff. But yeah. if you're... Afterwards, if people want to drink a beer and have a discussion, it's important that we talk to each other. It's, uh, and even on the boats, I think it's wonderful for some people want to tell their stories and other people don't. Yeah. And it's all okay. And, yeah. But being with a bunch of people, having a, having a goal, having a plan, executing the plan, that is satisfying no matter who you are, where you come from. If a plan comes together, yeah. everybody smiles. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so, thank you. Ralph, much. thanks for joining me and look forward to seeing you on, wow. a, on a boat in the near Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Thanks, okay. Dan. <laughs>